of the war and depression. Joining us now are John Avalon and Errol Lewis, both CNN contributors and co-authors of Deadline Artists. Here's the book right here. Deadline Artist, America's Greatest Newspaper Columns. <laughs> Welcome to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Before we talk about the book, we have to talk about class warfare in America because it's eating up again. Exactly, you know. exactly. As you know, President Obama is going to give this speech at 1030 Eastern Time, and he's going to talk about the Buffett rule, raising taxes on millionaires. Already, Republicans are fighting back. This is from Senator Lindsey Graham yesterday. Listen. When you pick one area of the economy and you say we're going to tax those people because most people are not those people, that's class warfare. Okay, so is it class warfare or is it sharing the burden? I, I think, you know, the, the bumper sticker of class warfare now gets trotted out for almost anything. Um, we're trying to deal with the deficit and the debt. If you take that seriously, it means everyone's got to get a little bit. We have a problem in this country between a rising gap between the rich and poor. Not even just the rich poor, the super rich. So I do think that there's, there's some political argument to be made for saying, look, let's take folks who have a net income of a million a year and make sure that they, they pay their fair share. And we're talking about not you know, an additional amount, but just getting it back to maybe those Clinton era levels. That said, this is the start of a negotiation. So everyone's got to take a deep breath and realize that both sides are polarized. They're staking out positions to satisfy their base. The question is, will they be able to meet in the middle? Yeah, but Errol, the president can't really negotiate on tax hikes. All these Republicans signed these anti-tax hike pledges. Yeah, and it, this is intended, among other things, to show how ridiculous it is to make that kind of a pledge before you've seen any of the realities of what we're going to have to do. Fighting two wars, trying to get prosperity back, trying to start or, or stop a depression from happening. So when uh, the Republicans say we're never going to raise any taxes on anyone, no matter how wealthy, no matter how unjustified the tax burden, no matter how great the needs are, we've got a trillion dollar infrastructure problem, we've got a well, bunch of bridges fairness, falling though, down. John Boehner came out and said, hey, I'm for tax reform and maybe some closing some of those tax loopholes. So he's not totally opposed to you know, kind of like fooling around with taxes. But tax hikes, tax hikes, no, 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 no. Well, but then it's the definition of what's tax hikes. That's where this whole fight's going to be. Because remember the last round we had when Boehner and Obama were working on a grand bargain, $4 trillion grand bargain. It got derailed because some folks on the far right said closing loopholes. Even if you lower rates, but close loopholes to increase revenue, which is what Bull Simpson had proposed, that would be called a tax hike by some of these folks who were taking, a, taking the pledge. That becomes a fundamental problem just in terms of governing. If you want to deal with the deficit and the debt, if you can't lower rates and close loopholes to raise revenue, then you've got very little room to maneuver on a tax reform. I still think that's where this is going to come. 35 senators signed on to a, a, a statement saying that they hope the super committee goes bigger than 1.5. It's got to happen with entitlement <laughs> reform and tax reform. And even the president's plan has a ha uh, $500 billion well, in entitlement reform. It's interesting you say that because the president supposedly is going to say this morning, hey, I'm not going to agree to anything with Medicare and Medicaid unless you consider tax hikes. And I think he has to do that because I don't know if you read this. This was in the Miami paper, I think Sunday. Uh, let me find it. Uh, so Congressional Black Caucus Chairman Emanuel Cleaver told the Miami Herald, quote, if former, if former President Bill Clinton had been in the White House and had failed to address this problem with unemployment among uh, African Americans, we would probably be marching on the White House. There is a left